Today on this old house, first thing we're gonna do is locate the toilet. I'm hoping it's gonna be in the middle of an open bay, okay. so that we have something clean to start with. Yo, not good. And our 1940s ranch gets a Dutch colonial flair. What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice. How excited are you guys to see that? Extremely. Right? You're going to have to choke down some dust first, though, before you get to that part. <laughs> oh, yeah. All the way. Money's in the detail. That is beautiful. Hey there. I'm Kevin O'Connor, and welcome back to this old house here in westerly Rhode Island where we are working on a ranch house built in the 1940s. And originally, it was just a one-story house. But we are adding about 1,000 square feet with a second story up there. It's going to be a gambrel shape. We've got the side walls already lifted. We've got the uh, building sheath, and the roof is up, which means it's time to start working on the inside. Hey, Tommy. Hey, guys. Hey, Kevin. Hey. All right. So uh, inside work soon, but a little work outside. Yeah. We got, we got a deck. A, the deck's going on here, and it's going to wrap around the front of the house there. So we're getting ready to set the post and the post base on top of our footings that are set below the frost line. So this is a pretty big improvement for us. I mean, there used to be an underground garage yep. right here. Yeah, that's all got filled in with a new foundation there. You can see it. Yep, and we brought the grade up, and so now this is basically at the first floor level. Right, right. So the plan first is we've got a we've got a guideline right here. This joist has been cut 67 inches. That's the inside dimension of our carrying beam right over there. Gotcha. All right. So this is a notch for our beam to set on. We'll screw it from behind, and that's our way of making a mechanical fastening system so that it doesn't lift. And we've got the best help that money can buy. Catherine, yeah, Deshaun, and Ryan, you guys ready to get some work done? Definitely. All right. All right. So the first thing we want to do is let's get a measurement out there, Ryan, so we can get a line down. You guys make sure that there's no stone in the way when we snap this line, because we want to set our outside position on all of these. So what have you got, Ryan, for a straight edge there? Anything? Inch and a quarter out down. And you're going to hold it tight against here. And I want uh, somebody, which one of you guys want to hold the level here I'll and make level. this plumb? And Ryan's going to measure that down low. It's plumb. Okay, now you're going to help to hold down tight so it doesn't move. And Ryan, you hook your tape on the inside. We're going to take the chalk line, bring it down the other end, and you're going to hook it on the outside of that metal post base down there. And we're going to run a line and snap it on the top of all these posts. All right, so I want to run my line down here, right there, and snap. That's the outside of that base right there. So that's for that one. Now we'll do this one. Uh, right there, it looks like. Yep. That will be right there. That's the outside of that one. All right, let's get the masonry drill and we can drill these holes and set these posts. All right, roll up the line. All right, we're ready to drill our holes to put our masonry fasteners into the concrete. We want to make sure that the face of the base is lined up with this line right here. We're going to drill a hole right there, about in the center. Go ahead. And you want to drill the hole deep enough so that we can get these wedge anchors all the way down and just have the nut and the washer stick up just a little bit. All right, so we're going to take a little straight edge. We put it on the ledger of the house and rest it there. I take my level and I put it against this post. This post is what we're going to get our length for our post that's going to support the beam. Okay. All right, you see the level? If I hold the bubble in the center of the two lines, it's level. So what I want to do is I want to drop it just a little so the bubble hits this line right here, that puts a slight pitch down on the deck so the water will go away from the building, not into the building. Okay. All right? So now, I want you to hold that tight. I'm going to push against this just a little bit. Okay. You ready? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm where I want to be. Now I'm going to mark right here underneath, 
right there. So that's the top of our beam on the outside. So now what I want to do is I want to measure down from that line. I'm going to measure down nine and a half inches. That's the height of the beam. So if I measure down nine and a half inches and I put okay. a line right here, that's the height of the post and that's the bottom of the beam down. Okay. Pull it, pull it. There you go, nail it. All right, so now we can plumb the rest of the post and fasten them. And then we just drop the joist in all the way down. There you got it. There you go, Kath, the next one's on you. Now you can watch this old house and ask this old house anytime, anywhere. Download our new app to stream full episodes to your tablet, your TV, and your phone. Binge on classic episodes, catch up on recent renovations, and get step-by-step -step help projects all around the house. Best of all, it's free. The most trusted home improvement information is now available on your Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, iOS, and Android devices. Download the This Old House streaming app today. Our house is in the Dutch colonial style, and that means that it has a gambro roof. There is an upper pitch, which is shallow, and then a lower pitch, which is steep. And typically, there would have been a bell shape, a curve right there at the end. So we're going to actually add that. It's going to be decorative only. Jeff, you got to put on these tails, I guess, to our sheathing right here. Yeah, so we have the extension of that rafter tail is going to come right down. That plywood will continue down and right on to this sweep that we made that goes outboard of the building. And, and it's not just for this part of the roof here. You're going to run this the full length of this goes side, all other the side? Way on the side, and then it returns and goes on the other side. Yeah. So this will actually become roof, but the side will be sidewall shingles. So I'm thinking a lot of rafter tail. 150 of them. Want me to show you how we make them? All right, so on the iPad here, you can see the drawing that shows that sweep for that roof that goes across here. That's where we just were, and then we're obviously going on all four sides. You've got a little one up top as well? Yeah, exactly. So even more tails than I thought. Right. And what are they made of? They're looking like, like some sort of a buildup here? Yeah, so we needed 14 inches in width. So we went with a laminated material. It's a finger-jointed lumber, mm -hmm. and you can see that finger joint there. So back in the day, we would cut this with a jigsaw on site and 150 of them would take a couple days to make all those. So now we can take that AutoCAD file, send it to a CNC machine. That CNC machine will make a repeatable pattern every single time. And we've got 150 of them it will take two hours to do it. So you've got these big 14 inch wide planks that are just running through the machine. Yep. The router's dropping down, That's tracing right. it, right. cuts it off, moves to the next and we're off to the races. Yeah. So Kevin, we've got the ledger already on the building here. That's our horizontal line. And that's a positive stop for these rafter tails. And then we've got it laid out so that it, it's right on the studs on the inside of the house. So we're gonna face screw this with a six inch screw. And then we'll just follow along and toenail into there. Okay, so we're going to end up with two layers of 3 8 plywood because remember we have that curve, we've got to get this plywood to bend with the curve. So we're going to line up our bottom, use your square to line that up to Sean. Alright, I'm good on the outside and on the face. Okay, we're going to nail the bottom first. Got my square there. Okay, now we've got to press that center in and a nail will suck it right down. Okay, then we can nail the top. Okay, come right over to me. Come right over. Yep. All right, 
right, so next we have our fascia trim and we've dadoed out a slot to accept our soffit. Nice. So that soffit will lock into here and then the fascia comes right along, drip edge will be here and there'll be roof shingles here. Another flashing there and then siding will come down onto that. All right, that's a pretty sweet detail. Really gives us that Dutch colonial look. Yeah. I like that system. Yeah, all right, let's get it going. Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider, a new streaming service from This Old House, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial free. Watch it all in the This Old House app and join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. So the budget on this landscaping project is small, but there's a few things I want to talk to the homeowners about. They need a formal walkway to the front door and steps from the parking area to the back of the house. In Westerly, there is one material to consider. Here in Westerly, granite was a very large part of the economy for over a century. John Cadori is our local historian. You want to tell us a little bit about the granite industry in Westerly? Oh. Westerly was well known as a granite center for a good 100 years from 1850 to 1950. Uh, actually, at any one time, there were over 100 companies operating in the Westerly area. But what made Westerly granite so valuable is that it's a very hard, it's an igneous rock made from molten lava that hardened under great pressure. Right. And therefore, uh, is very strong. And so therefore, you can see fine detail uh, when the master carver works with it, and it lasts for years. So what did they use the granite for? What are some of the famous buildings and monuments that have used Westerly granite? Well, locally, uh, Christ Episcopal Church here in Westerly, the town hall in Westerly is all ma made out of Westerly red granite. But around the country, uh, the second division memorial on the south lawn of the White House in Washington, D.C., the Library of Congress building in Washington, D.C., the Antietam Monument in, uh, in Maryland, the site of the Civil War, a massive uh, monument, even out into Utah and Colorado, 42 states. And we're still looking to, in those other eight states right. to see if There's they have any westerly granite monuments. <laughs> How big was it in the economy here? Well, in the 1900 census, 57% of the population had some direct contact with the granite industry. Okay. If they weren't stone cutters or quarry workers, they maybe handled the oxen that hauled the stone. Mm -hmm. The problem is that between the Great Depression and World War II, a lot of the talent had been lost. And so by the time the war was over, uh, two or three of the quarries closed. But the granite is still here, it's not depleted. The, the, the granite is here, but in Westerly, it's not as close to the surface as it is. If you go up to Barry, Vermont, mm -hmm. there the beds are much closer to the surface, and they've calculated that they have enough granite to last another thousand years. Really? Yeah, the beds are close to the surface, easy to get at. Okay, but for years and years, it did fuel the town it and did. the economy. Okay. You That's can imagine the cost today. Right. No one's willing to pay for it. Right. It's just it's just too much yeah. Jeff looks like class is in session, huh? We got another window install lesson. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a pitch in this windowsill so that water will roll out. So we're gonna use a clapboard. So the clapboard's a little thicker on the back and a little thinner on the front. So we're gonna put it in so that it's flush to the front. And again, the high side is on the inboard side. That way we're pitched out. All right, so we're just using regular roofing nails to fasten this clapboard to the sill. Okay. So now we have our pitch. So we wanna waterproof this system so that the water that comes in will work its way out. So we have a flashing tape here that we're gonna put in, and this is self-adhered, so we're gonna remove half the paper on one side. You don't want it to stick to itself. Okay, so we're gonna go about halfway in. 
we'll start it in the middle and work our way right to the outside and then run it up the sides. So now we're going to peel off this side. Go ahead, Ryan. Yep, with your hand. Yep, keep going. All the way into the corner. Try to get a nice tight seal into that corner. Okay, so a critical step here in the corner. We're just going to make a little slice in that corner and lap that over. That's why we put that first little piece in there. Check this out, Captain. Ready? So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to soft flash all the way around the opening. So we'll pre-cut those pieces. Two. You don't want to take all the release paper off at the same time because it, once it sticks to itself. So we're going to go about two inches to the outboard side and the rest will be to the inboard side. Go ahead now, finish that, try to keep it even all the way down. Okay. There you go, just right nice up. and smooth while he guides it down. Just stay a little ahead of him. There you go. Get it all down, push tight. Can't yep. overdo it. All right, now the last piece across the top. Now this one we're going to stick to the top first. We've got to make two little slices here, then we'll fold it under. Okay, Sean will take a couple cuts right in the corner there. Corner, corner, okay, so fold that under, nice and tight. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply a bead of caulk around three sides of the window. Okay, so we're not going to caulk the bottom because again, back to that water migration, we want to give a gap for that water to get out from underneath. So before we put the window in, we're going to put in a composite shim. That's going to lift our window up off this sill about a quarter of an inch. So that way, again, if any water gets into this system, it comes down and it's got a path to escape. That's the reason why we didn't caulk that bottom flange, because we don't want to trap water in. We want to give it a path to escape. Okay, so the next thing we are ready for a window. We're going to put the bottom in first. Okay, good. Now, make sure that flange gets up into okay, the caulking. There you go. Okay. All right, now Ryan, I want you to use your fingertips to put inside the, between the window and the rough opening so that you roughly get it in the center. Okay, so you feel the reveal? Is that about even? Just about, yeah. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is level the sill, and I'm going to do that from the inside. So I'm going to switch places with Ryan. Ryan, you come out and help Deshaun with the window. Okay, Catherine, we've got it centered in the opening, so the first thing we're going to start with is leveling the sill. Okay. And that looks like it is right on. Ryan, I want you to put a roofing nail in the bottom corner of each side. Okay, good. Now the other one. Okay, so now the next step is critical. We want to make sure that the window is square. So you can see right now that this window is three pieces, so it can rack from side to side. So, the way we're going to measure for square is you're going to hook your tape on the corner of the outside of the window and measure to the opposite corner, and then we're going to compare it to the other side. Okay, so I want an exact measurement. 69 and a half. So let's hook here. See, we're hooking right on the outside corner. What do you got for a measurement? 69 and a half. Okay, so the window is square. All right, so I want to see you put a nail in each side of the top, in that top hole. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure our reveal is correct up the sides. Okay, so you see that the double hung rides along this rail, yeah. all right, and this reveal is a little open in the middle 
And then this side looks pretty good. So we want to shim this closed a little bit before we nail off that flange. Okay, okay so we're just going to wedge a shim in between there and close up that gap. Okay, you guys, in the center of this window, I want you to put a nail in each hole on each side. Okay, so now you guys can finish off nailing that window. And then slide it over. Pretty good, yeah. Okay. Nice job. All right, then flatten that out. A lot of framing went on this week, and also the rough plumbing began. Josh Jordan, our plumber, came and started the master bathroom group right here. So you can see the large pipe is a three inch pipe is for a toilet. And you can see the master toilet comes here and it runs inside the joist bay right here. Simple. And it turns and goes down inside this internal partition, which means we could drill through this top plate and run this vertical down to the basement pretty straightforward. Now on this first floor, it's a wide open plan. You've got a living room right here. You've got a dining room right here. And you have a bathroom group right here. And there's no petitions, not like the petitions we had to run the master bath drain down. So you also have all kinds of glass, and you got an outside wall right here that you really would want to drill through the structure right here. I'm glad you're the plumber, Josh, on this one. How are you going to get it done? Well, first thing we're going to do is locate the toilet. I'm hoping it's going to be in the middle of an open bay okay. so that we have something clean to start with. Uh, so what we're going to do first is go out, go up and... Uh, the pilot hole down. All right, I'll wait here. All right. Oh, yo, not good, of course. Josh, come on down. So look at this now. If we try to put the toilet exactly where it's drawn, look where it comes, exactly onto this double joist right here. So look at the pipe would take up this much. We can't cut that structure out. Boy, of course. So we're going to have to find a way to move this toilet one way or another, Josh. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, a lot of times that does happen with framing in houses. Uh, so what we generally do is talk to the general contractor. Oh, Speaking yeah. of the devil. What do we got here? We're right exactly on the joist there, Jeff. Never we, fails. I know. <laughs> so we have a couple options. I mean, we really want to go upstairs and see if there's any leeway on where we put that toilet. Try to get the toilet, the pipe to one side or the other. Right. Ideally, we'd go that way, but if I remember correctly, there's the, the bedroom walls there, right. so we might have to look at going this way. Let's so check let's it. go on up. All right, so this is the kids' bath, and the toilet sits right here in this alcove. Right, and so we're looking for 12 and a half off the back wall, so right there is exactly where we don't want to be. Right. So which side do we go to, this side or that side? Well, if we go this side, that means we have to move this entire bedroom oh, yeah, wall way. that way. You don't want to do that. So if we went to this side, all we have to do is pad this little section of wall back. We can advance that toilet into the room. We'll make up a little bit here that to, to hide your eye that. Another one. Great. Yeah. And we're going to put our sectional wall perfect, so that our new rough-in is 12 and a half from the center of that rough. And nobody will ever know. Nobody will ever know. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project. So be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.